Hello everyone. So a very warm welcome to another interesting session from the deck of econometrics uh, on the behalf of Economicspedia. Um, so as you all know that there are a couple of sessions that uh, we have covered regarding econometrics and uh, with respect to econometrics, a very small sub part that is the time series. About this topic also, we have covered some of the uh, important sessions. For example, the unit root session, you can get hold um, by clicking the card that is appearing on your screen right over here. Also, you can uh, check out the description box because the links are given there. Also, uh, we have discussed uh, the co-integration session, right? So these are very important sessions which are connected with this time series model, right? Now, to brush up once again, I would like to take up the topic from the uh, data set, how the actual model looks like whenever we are talking about the time series or maybe we are talking about the cross-section data. So, here we are only concerned about uh, time series. So, how a time series model looks like? It's yt that is equal to, let's say, alpha plus beta xt plus of ut right let this be equation number one so here this is a time series model and a cross section model how we are going to write it yi equal to alpha plus of beta xi plus ui let's say this is equation number two so what is the major difference between the things here it is varying across t that means over different time periods and it is varying across different cross sectional units right now, um, the time series, the time variable, it can be of various types, right? For example, um, it can be a day, it can be a month, maybe a quarter, maybe annual, maybe biannual. So, like that. And over here, the cross-section units is also changing and it is lying between 1, 2, up to n in the same way. T also varies from 1 to up to n. Alright, so these are the basic differences. Now, in uh, all this, both the series, whether it be time series or cross section, of course, the properties of the models are very much different. Models, by model, I mean the data set. The data itself is it, uh, composed of different characteristics and that is why we have to fit the model um, based on the data set that whether it is a time series model or it is a cross-sectional model, right? So, coming to a very important part of the time series, that is one of the very basics of time series. That is the judgment of stationarity and the non-stationarity. Now, since I have already mentioned that in time series, the variables will be traveling or changing across the time path, right? So, across different time, the model itself is changing. For example, <clears throat> a very high frequency data, for example, the stock market data, it changes every second, right? So, that duration, the time variable there is a second. Now, again, there are many type of data which changes either annually, biannually, or maybe quarterly, as I have already covered. Now, since my yt is changing, right? Because my xt and uts are changing across the different time series. So, what happens? Under time series, we are discussing about a, a time path, right? So, this variable will be following a time path. Again, in one of our sessions, of mathematical economics, we have covered how to find the time path for difference and differential equations, just like that. So I'm not going into deeper details regarding that part till now. So this is following a time path. That means what? It, this variable is having a distributional function. Right? So this yt is having a distribution according to which it is changing for different uh, sample or different uh, unit of the time. 
in the same way this xt is again following our distributional function same thing goes for this error term it is also following a distributional function now the challenge here in time series is that we don't always know which exact form of distribution the variables are uh, following for example this yt which exact form of distribution it is following we don't know that right so now ut this is a white noise as i have already discussed in my previous sessions so if this is a white noise that means what it is following all the clrf functions that means what it is following a standard normal distribution um, that means it is following a normal distribution right so we do we know about the distribution of ut but we have no idea about the distribution of yt xt i don't know how many xts are there so that is again very much important to keep in mind that is we don't know the distributional function what we know we do know the mean of the model of the of the variable or you can keep it like that we do know the variance we do know the covariance of the model and from these mean variance and covariance we can get some idea regarding the distributional function of the variables right now so we get to know the mean variance and covariance of the model now let me just uh, clear it and get started with one form of time series now we all know that under time series broadly there are various types of series number one is auto regressive series then we have moving average series then we have auto regressive moving average series and also we have auto regressive integrated moving average series right so we all have this now generally if you are pursuing your um, masters or uh, graduation or even if you are preparing for some competitive exams mostly the part that is being covered till now is ar ma and arma to some extent so how an arma uh, a so how an ar uh, series looks like let's take up yt equal to let's say phi not is my drift parameter phi 1 yt minus 1 plus of epsilon t right that means it is first order lag dependent variable one period lag so that is why it is ar of order 1 right correct now from here what we can find we can find the expectation of yt which is what it is the mean value then we can find variance of yt which is the variance right now variance of yt of course it depends upon the error term mean however does not depend upon the error term and again if we want to find covariance yt yt minus let's say s so this is again giving us the covariance part it is also again somehow related with the error part now the topic of today's discussion is related to the stationarity and non-stationarity of the series. So, as the name suggests, stationarity, that means it is being unchanged. Now, related, if my variance, covariance and mean of the variable, of the dependent variable is time independent that means none of these are changing with time okay none of these are changing with time then it is my stationarity series it is being constant and on the other hand if it is time dependent that means it is changing with the time periods. For example, in time period 1, the value is uh, something else than the one that will be in time period 2. So, if it is time 
dependent, then we have it as non-stationary P. Right? So this is the basic difference between stationarity and non-stationarity. So what do we want our data to be? If I ask you a question, do we want the series to be stationary or do we want the series to be non-stationary? This is the one that will give us uh, the variable that is changing. And here it will give us the variables that it is remaining constant. So you can just pause the video and try to answer this because in the next one minute I'm going to give the answer. Now, the first thing how a student start to think is that uh, non-stationary, right? So this means that the value of y is changing over time. That means this is going to give us a trend. Maybe this will make sense to plot the data and uh, see how the trend line goes. However, this is a stationary series and it is not changing. That means we will not be able to capture the trend. If in this line you are thinking, then let me tell you that it's not the correct way of thinking. Here, the value of y is changing. I'm not saying that it is not changing. What is not changing? It is the mean variance and covariance of the variable. Yt is definitely different. Y1 is different from Y2 is different from Y3. Same for this. It is Y1, it is changing. Y2, Y3, it is changing. Now, the first thing that I mentioned that under, uh, let's, let's understand from non-stationary part. Let's say we have a non-stationary series. So we have Y1, Y2, Y3, this is changing. This means what? My mean of yt, expectation of yt, this is changing with time, right? Variance of yt is changing, covariance of yt, yt minus s is also changing. If these all are changing, we can't conclude anything about the distribution of yt which is important if we don't know the distribution how can we actually interfere or get the inference out of the data it doesn't make any sense okay so this is the important thing you need to understand just think it conceptually you will be able to answer it all right so this is the reason however in the case of stationarity definitely we are getting y1 y2 y3 which is different for every time period but my epsilon-t variance of yt expectation of yt variance and covariance these are not changing the thing that we want so that we can conclude about the distribution of the yt if we don't do that we will not be able to get the exact inference out of the data uh, one of our upcoming sessions we will be discussing about the methods to get a series uh, from non-stationary to stationarity so that we can infer our data in a better way. So as I have always mentioned that why do we uh, need to know econometrics? There are may many people out there who uh, scare, who fear about this econometrics. So there is nothing to be scared about this. Basically, in econometrics, what we do, get it very clear, we try to infer the numbers out of the data. We have ample amount of data, big data sets, but what is exactly the data set want to tell us? For that, we need a tool and this econometrics is just a tool. I hope uh, this from this session, it's a very crisp session and I have tried to cover up the basics of uh, time series. Because although I have covered some of the very uh, advanced level topic from the econometrics, but uh, from time series, from time series, but this, uh, this series is all totally dedicated to the basics. So I hope this session was helpful to you. And uh, if it is, do hit the like button. And if you think that uh, this session is in a very lucid way, do share it with your friends, do share it with your classmates. And uh, Economicspedia is here with a bigger and a wider mission 
to impact 1 lakh students across the globe. Help us join us to achieve this mission of ours. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a constant support to Economicspedia. And uh, thank you. I hope to see you in one of our next sessions very soon.